Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. I'm Josh. And we're here to uh, usher you into the weekend. So we have a lot of stuff to talk about. I got some city council where they're going to be talking about the curse of being grandfathered in. Uh, we're going to be talking about some, uh, it's Friday, so we have the Flagship Friday video of the week. And uh, the theme is, you know, everybody always has that friend that has an open mic. Um, and what else do I have? I have a couple new programs we'll be airing on MCAT this weekend as well, including the very last uh, video from the Ballet Beyond Borders. We filmed it back in February. Pretty much we had content for the last uh, 12 weeks. <laughs> So it's going to be a great uh, weekend of content and wonderful things. And plus, there's a whole bunch of events happening this weekend as well, including Diversity Day happening at the Missouri Museum on Saturday. But we're going to get into that a little bit later because I'm assuming you probably want to know what the weather's going to be like. Saturday, it's going to be mostly sunny. Today, you can expect chances of showers from 30 to 50 percent happening today. Scattered all around. It hailed yesterday for a little bit. It's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, high is going to be 50 degrees. Uh, you're you're going to get the highest on Saturday. Saturday uh, with 57 degrees outside. Don't laugh, Josh. Y the low is going to be 35 degrees, and the high uh, on Sunday is going to be 46 degrees with that 30% chance of rain. Monday is going to be mostly cloudy, and it looks like it's pretty much kind of been like this for the last couple days. You know, my last weather report on Wednesday was just as uh, similar to this. One day of sunniness, another day of rain, but you might want to have to batten down the hatches uh, because just because it's raining and all that snow runoff is happening doesn't mean that you don't need a uh, um, fireproof um, education. So, uh, of course, I covered the Bonner Milltown Community Council. Um, I do it every second Monday of the month, and they do it in Bonner's uh, Red Barn. Um, and they did it at a community meeting, and they talked about the new $1.4 million annual levy that would hire more full-time firefighters in rural Missoula areas. So far, they are able to cover so much, but they want to have at least two full-time staff for every one of their rural fire stations, 24-7, 365. But I'm sure, uh, you know, you must be caring about like how much you're going to have to pay for this. So for a residential valued at 200000 for taxable purposes, um, the levy would increase that property tax by $79.92 annually. On the residential property valued at $100,000, um, approval of the increase would result in 39.96 annual increase in property taxes. And this isn't necessarily the full value of your house because some people who pay for like a hundred, like a $219,000 home, the taxable value is X amount of money. So you might fall into the bracket of $100,000. So you might want to get that checked. But they're asking about this and uh, there will be have, they'll be doing a vote in the Missoula County area sometime soon. There are only, there are roughly 18,000 voters in the Missoula Rural Fire District, which is outside Missoula city limits. If the, if the levy fails, Missoula Rural Chief Chris Newman said that the district staffing would remain as it is currently with two career firefighters, EMTs, available to respond to emergency calls at each station during daytime peak hours, but few are available to respond between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Um, yeah, so, you know, just mo more emergency vehicles. They're looking for more money to uh, staff them up. In state news, the statute of mandatory sentence for 25 years for sex crimes against children under the age of 12 has been passed in the Senate state. House Bill 155 says the first 25 years, years must be served uh, without parole or suspension, up from the 10 years currently set into state law. Um, this was a turnover from a previous law that was passed back in 2017 that put the sentence from 25 to 15 years mandatory. Many reasons were to protect the victims so that they would not have to relive this kind of thing within a shorter period of their lifetime. Example, so if you have a four-year-old who was sexually molested, um, when they turn in their adolescence and their young teenager, they would have to uh, basically talk about this. But also they uh, passed a lot of other bills saying that you don't have to have to appear in court, but you can write a written response that can be submitted to the court later on. And that was part of uh, under Reger's House Bill 463, the State Department of Corrections and County Attorney must notify felony victims of defendant motion to receive conditional discharge from supervision. The victim would receive a copy of the motion and be allowed to submit a written statement. They would also be allowed to testify if the court grants the defendant a hearing. Um, of course, you can find out more through the Helena Independent Record. Uh, there's a pa they're passing a lot of bills, and they're, I believe they're in 75, the 75th day of their uh, legislation, Montana le le State Legislation Session. So you can check all that out um, through their, uh, I believe, the, uh, the legislature's website.
National news, Senator Bernie Sanders unveils and reveals his Medicare for All bill, the idea that fueled his 2016 presidential run. Sanders' latest bill would establish a national single-payer Medicare system with vastly expanded benefits. Sanders' plan would also prohibit private plans from competing with Medicare and would eliminate cost sharing. New in this version with a universal provisions for long-term care in home and a community settings, though Medicaid would continue to cover in, um, institu institutional care and states would determine the standard of eligibility. Of course, uh, last sessions in December, uh, Dems tried to push a Medicare for America, but it didn't really get through. But the current House session of a uh, majority of Dems are very confident that this will gain some traction. So it's basically just kind of like a rebrand of the um, Medicare for Americans. Yeah. Yeah. So a poll by Quinnipiac University says that voters want strong health care improvements and candidates um, need some powerful uh, to deliver it. Uh, meanwhile, conservative, uh, conservatives repeat many of the arguments levied against Medicare for all that the plan is too expensive and too disruptive. Also, private health care industries companies are batting down the hatches and getting ready to rally against this because they uh, have money to lose from this. International news. Julian Assange has officially been arrested. He was extradited from the consulate. Um, I believe it was the Ecuadorian consulate in London, England. So he was basically living there for the last seven years f since 2012. He had his own show through uh, RT, Russia's uh, Russia Television. And he kind of did that for a while until uh, he just basically got kicked out. And then he was um, apprehended by London officials. Um, one of the reasons why they wanted to extradite him is that Sweden, there was allegations of sexual assault, but there's a lot more to the story than at face value. So, you know, Julian Assange, you know, you know him from WikiLeaks. He released a lot of information. He perpetuates the release of a lot of information, like Edward Snowden, those kind of guys, whistleblowers, and all sorts of things in terms of that. Uh, but of course, the day just came the other day when a song could be seen in a police vehicle at we Westminster uh, Magistrates Court on Thursday in London. He was arrested by Scotland Yard police officers outside the Ecuadorian embassy in central London. So that's what's going on. Like seven years, basically living in the same place where they want to arrest him. That's actually, that, that's pretty impressive. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, you're basically stuck in a, a room forever until yeah. they decide to either kick you out or whatever. Edward Snowden, I believe he's in another country, in their embassy, just kind of chilling. Yos is just kind of waiting for their turn to yeah. get him back and punish him for whistleblowing the NSA for spying on us. So anyways, yeah, that's basically it. Um, with your new stuff, I got a bunch of new programs for you guys. Um, and without further ado, here is a good representation of what you guys can check out, which includes the Ballet Beyond Borders. <laughs> That doesn't tell you much in terms of the law. It tells you a source of law, um, that these rights are inalienable, because of course we alienate, we alienate these rights. Of course we give up um, life, liberty, and property at times to enter into society. That is the point. That is, our, uh, that is our American and our Western natural rights tradition. That goes back to law. That's part of the deal. Um, we give up those rights, but the reason we remind um, our government of this in the Declaration of Independence and in Montana's Constitution that there are inviolable and inalienable rights is, is to um, suggest that that's, that is the deal, remind them of the deal, and that if they are to act upon our lives, liberty, or property, for example, um, that it must be justified with regard to those terms of the deal. In other words, government, if you're going to um, abridge my life, liberty, or property, um, you're going to do it so as to further our collective lives, liberty, or property. It, it, was, um, it was more than anybody could afford, and it became an apartment building. Um, and here's just a few pictures of, I like this picture because it has a, a, a horse and a horseless carriage both parked at the door. Um, it, it, it was uh, much ridiculed at the time 
um, for its gaudiness, but I think a lot of uh, people in New York City wish it were, it were there to, to visit today. Um, uh, they sold tickets to the public to visit, um, I think it was 50 cents or a quarter to tour after the Clarks moved out, before the home was torn down. The, the builder, the, the, the destroyer of the house, uh, made some money by charging people. Charlie Chaplin was among those who took a tour. Some sort of codependency on ministries of health for these places that really cannot uh, fund the activities that are being implemented in their own country. So, this, you know, th these are bigger, totally ethical type questions uh, that really, you know, need to be addressed, you know, both at the Zambia level but also uh, at the institute level and whether these are appropriate things to go on, yeah. So, as I was shooting photos on the side and going to my classes in social work, um, a friend passed on a grant opportunity to me through the arts department to go to New Orleans and photograph how New Orleans had recovered from Hurricane Katrina five years past. So I applied and wrote an essay and submitted images that had nothing to do with post-natural disaster communities and I won this opportunity to go. And not ever having been on an assignment before, I said, mm, you know, two days is enough time to bring back 25 gallery-worthy images, um, which in retrospect, I like to spend at least minimum three weeks in a place. So just to give you an idea. Hey guys, now it's time for another uh, group of crappy movies that have come out this weekend. It's called time for Pre-Critic, where I judge a movie whether they need it or not, and I have no um, background to know exactly if they're good or not. So anyways, Hellboy. Well, if you're uh, all for those reboot calls in a movie about a superhero with a reluctant to be a superhero, because those seem to be very popular. It's just like, I'm a superhero, but I'm not sure if I want to be a superhero. When you get an international crisis of faith and believing in yourself, you always have a wise old man to guide you or just give you a bunch of exposition. Anyways, the world might come to an end, but you can still watch another run-of-the-mill story about Hellboy. Anyways, enjoy a movie that has uh, critics basically saying nothing until the movie's release. Really does. Like, you know, it's yeah. really kind of a bad sign when a movie's just like, we'll let the, we'll, we'll have a, like a gag order on the release of critics um, until like the very edge. And so far, I think they have like a 9% on Rotten Tomato as Ooh. of today. Oof. So, it's uh, interesting, but I saw a couple of the trailers, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of red band trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, geez. They really leaned into the gore, apparently, from what I heard. So, if you like that kind of stuff, good for you. And then moving on, here's a kid's movie for some of you who want to bring your kids. Uh, Zach Galifianakis has now become kind of like the new Jack Black in terms of, like, making kids' movies. It kind of seems like that. Yeah. But anyway, sometimes stop animation makes a resurgence, and every year they always have every year or two they always have a movie, and this is by the same studio as Kubo and the Two Strings. So you have Hugh Jackman and Zach Galifianakis, Zoe Z Zeldana, um, which are all in this movie. They're doing voices. I mean, it's basically just showing up for an hour for work and just recording lines, pretty much. But what starts out as a um, What's that? What is that word I said? Gale might not end in a kiss. Come yet another Yeti Bigfoot movie. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, you know, they, it seems like they get a resurgence of all those Yeti movies that are coming out and apparently uh, makes another resurgence. Uh, why not watch Harry and the Hendersons? That movie is a staple. That movie is the best. It's a gem and it stars the guy who played the Predator as Harry from the Hendersons. It's the, it's the guy who, who's the body actor for uh, the Predator also was Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. That's really cool. And the uh, animatronic face shoot suit is amazing. Anyways, this movie is about a lonely Sasquatch who thinks Yetis are the same, right? Right? You know, Yetis and Sasquatches are the same, right? Of course well, not. But anyways, uh, well, let's not get into how racist that sounds and move on to this next movie, which is basically big, but opposite. So the movie's called Little. So from the makers of Not Big comes a movie about a powerful executive. I'm sure they'll have to show something like a uh, real estate or architect mogul. It's always something like, it's like yeah, a big I boss person. Yeah, I saw a poster for this. Like yeah. And there's a poster right there. It's yep. such an early 2000s thing. Yeah, it really is. You know, it you know, it follows the typical tropes of adolescence again, but not really as we see kids in adult situations. I can kind of see how it's funny for a lot of kids to be in adult situations, but yeah. like when you like, but that's like Tom Hanks as the adult. 
I mean, you know, he's an adult, and it's a movie that's about, about, about pretend, but then you actually have an actual kid actress who is in those situations of adult stuff, and she's, like, creeping on the teacher. That's what I noticed from the trailer. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, but it, it was kind of weird because overnight advanced aging doesn't exist unless you watched uh, Mor Maury Povich. Um, but not like the you're the father, Maury Povich, but, you know, like some of those stories where it's just like, I'm sad because I don't age like everybody else. Because I, I, have you ever seen Maury Povich and no. not seen You're Not the Father? Oh, oh. Yeah, God. everyone knows he's he's does the show that says You're Not the Father. They do the DNA test on the show. Right, right. And yeah. the guy's like, woo! Yeah. And then just like walks away and just like, you are the father. You know, yeah, I've seen a lot of clips of that. Especially it's all, that's all it is. Yeah. yeah. And, but he does other parts of the talk show that nobody cares about, so he kind of sold out. But anyways, Little comes out this weekend. And it's, it, it, I don't know, it's like, it's like they really just like, hey, you guys like big, right? Oh, what's the opposite of big? Little, boom, movie, time, go. <laughs> and it does kind of seem like that's what it is. And those are your movies that are coming out this weekend. That was uh, pre-critic. I have a movie for you guys, and it's uh, the Flagship Friday video of the week. And this is Stars of the Kids from Meadow Hill. So without further ado, here are some of the kids from Meadow Hill. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some barriers that need to be torn down or or not. I don't know. You, we'll find out after this. Okay, yeah, so today is my first time playing bass guitar, and I'm going to just play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Go check out my SoundCloud. You should subscribe to it. And then I'm coming out with a CD next week. Oh my And I, I perform here every week. So you should come. Okay, I will. And what about you? Did you like the performance? Um, Be brutally honest. Um, um, well, I think when you kicked over the chair was a little much. But uh, other than that, it was okay. Um, well, why are you here then? Because I thought I could see you should have just done all kind or all mean for the song. You shouldn't have switched. It was okay. Um, no, just leave. No. Oh, okay. Bye. Oh my gosh, that was so rude. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't have said that. I was amazing. Totally. Yeah. And I'm going to play it better next week. And I'm going to show her how good I am when I become a pop star. Okay. You do that. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm walking the line like Johnny Cash. Who's Johnny Cash? I don't know. Oh, I forgot my stuff over there. I'll be right back. I'll meet you by my locker. Okay. She told me to tell her the truth, and that was the actual truth. But when someone tells you to tell the truth, don't tell the truth. It ends up bad. How is this going to go bad? I've told the truth to so many people. It's not like this is going to be any different. But it's Karis we're talking about. This is the first concert I've been to. How did I ever talk to you? everything. Where is Poppy? She told me she was going to meet me here. What's that noise? Oh, hi, Paris. Oh, hi. Do you want to hear? I'm practicing for my next gig next week. I actually can't right now. Have you seen Bobby? Uh, no, I haven't seen her. What did you do with Bobby? Why? I, I have. Why? I did nothing. I've been here practicing for my next gig. I'm going to try to write my own songs next. That's where I move. And go. Ocean. 
but about the ocean. Hi, Paris. I didn't hear you coming. Wait, you're supposed to hear me coming? Well, you carry a bass guitar everywhere, so I just thought you might be playing. What is that supposed to mean? Why are you backing away from me? Are you afraid of me? I'm well, afraid of you? Of course not. I'm your biggest fan. I know you are. You come to my, all my performances. Well, I haven't seen you at the last one. Where were you? I was dog sitting. Are you allergic to dogs, though? It's hypoallergenic. Sure it is. Are you coming to my next performance? No. Cannoli needs another sitter. Then why don't you just get another one? Because they asked me to do it. The bass guitar is like the backbone of the band. If you don't have it, it won't. you will not follow a beat. Do you have a backbone? Well, of course I have a backbone. You need a backbone to walk, and if you didn't have one, you'd have a wheelchair. Um, oh, I hear cannoli. I gotta go. Wait a minute. Cannoli's a food. <sighs> you missed my concert last weekend. Aren't you supposed to be my friend? A friend? I'm a friend. And speaking of friends, have you seen Poppy? You poppies? Isn't that a type of flower? It's a winter. They're all dead. She may be coming back in two days. Wow, I had no idea she was sick. What about Karis? Oh, she's been transferred in all days to a new school across the country. Thank you. I had no idea Karis didn't do anything, and I had no idea Poppy got the super contagious rose under the foot disease. Sorry, I thought you did something to Poppy. Turns out she's been sick this whole time. Me? Do something? I couldn't hurt a fly. I don't do anything, even to a trashy friend. Hey guys, welcome back. Nothing is more hilarious than a misunderstanding, but let's talk about some other misunderstandings that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your city council. One of the things that uh, have been going on is the concerns and the deep concerns about uh, a barrier in the alleyway behind the Hoagieville and the uh, adjacent um, Domino's Pizza. So Troy Monroe, city engineer, gives a little bit more background about where it is and what it's all about. So here's Troy Monroe with, as the, the Missoula city engineer. Uh, two accesses on um, Higgins Avenue and one access onto Livingston. They have not had access into this alley. Back in 1988, City Council closed this alley to through traffic by placing a barricade here at the midpoint of the alley. So currently, what we do have is um, a business up here, Domino's Pizza, that has um, an angled parking lot. There, these customers, these delivery people, um, can leave via south part way through the alley, and then west to Leicester. Again, Hogieville people can access onto Higgins and Livingston, and then this portion that's closed has been accessible to the residents down here on both sides of the alley. Of course, as a public right away, um, many things that the Hogieville wants to do is they're going to kind of close the access around this part. They want to build like a, as close to the street as they possibly can with the big building right here, and then have access through the alleyway to their parking lot structure as well, without uh, disrupting the flow of the gas station, which is just, um, I believe, yep, north of them, right here. 
All right, so uh, many things are kind of going back and forth, and uh, this is uh, something that was all completely driven back in 1988. As you see from the map, they, were, they want to figure out how to gain access since the Higgins entrance of the proposed tavern would be blocked by the new facility. Troy uh, Monroe talks about the suggested changes that range from opening up the north side passage, but blocking the east side closing, so they wanted to kind of have like a, a longer strip. They have many other proposals about how they want to do this, but I'll get into that later. There was talk about allowing this to happen, but to make this northbound only. And that is concerning for us because of how Domino's Pizza's, Domino's parking lot is angled this direction. They would still need to be able to access this movement. So we would have an alley that would be northbound for half of it, two directional for half of it. And we're under the uh, keep it simple mentality, so we would not we would not be in favor of having a, a, a northbound only full alley. All right, so that uh, mean, the, the many ways they want to be able to keep the flow going and just kind of keep moving forward. Uh, tr um, another option is to block Domino's, and um, the only. W have one way out from the South Street exit, you know, to and from, all that stuff. It's, of course, it's very confusing um, because access is key to utilities like trash, emergency vehicles, and so on. Jordan has, uh, puts in his two cents. At, um, as, um, as Mr. Goebel said on, on Monday, this is a public alley. This is our, this is the council's uh, purview to, to um, make, you know, to, to dis determine uh, what happens with this alley. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully there's a, a solution in there that um, is beneficial to all the parties involved. Um, but this is not a private alley. This is not a, a private drive. Um, this is not um, any of the residents' uh, personal property, nor is it um, any of the commercial entities' personal property. It's, it's a public space. Of course, you know, um, the city council went on to address a little more about people's concerns about the through traffic. Uh, Domino's Pizza, when it opened back in 1988, there was concerns that, uh, you know, with deliveries that go as late as 3 in the morning, people would have cars driving through that alleyway late at night. And there's basically, if you looked at that map, you saw, like, there's, like, a house on that one corner of that junk junket. So uh, Chris Gol Global from Hoagieville, who is uh, 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 proposing this new tavern, talks about access with large trucks and about the some new concerns about just like if it stays the same way it's just not going to help because it's still uh, obstructing a lot of of issues when it comes to transportations and large trucks also take into account uh, the Domino's delivery too they have a huge semi that comes three days a week that kind of comes right in I don't know it comes in right here and maneuvers kind of up to back in about three years ago they did hit this telephone pole I mean, a power pole so I mean that they've hit that before that's a pretty tight little maneuver for them I also do along with uh, garbage I have a uh, grease company uh, Baker commodities out of Spokane that comes very I think once a month once every two months and he is a large semi as well he picks up and recycles the grease and he is a full-sized uh, tractor trailer as well. He's not a small um, garbage truck sized truck. He, so he he needs to maneuver as well somehow. That's the only th those two semis are taking those considerations as well. All yeah. right. So uh, that was um, one of the owners of the Hoagievilles in Missoula. Um, concerns of the citizens and ca our cars and vehicles going down the alleys and some near the residential areas. Doug uh, Shel Shelsey. An attorney who represents some of the residents talks about access. Well, no one is opposed to keeping the south end closed. There was no testimony from anyone, of, of any member of the public, that said that they were absolutely uh, convinced that they had to open that area. As far as Mr. Goebel is concerned, that was the basis of an agreement that he made with the adjoining property owners that basically they would move the barrier back to the boundary line between Helen's property and the property of uh, his property. So you can see that right here. They were talking about putting the boundary line right inside, I think, right there. Is that right? That's right, Tom, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Uh, Tom Montgomery was at that meeting. That was a resolution made by all of them. 
So, you know, um, right now it's kind of, uh, you know, grandfathered in, and that seems to be a, a big staple with the Missoula community in terms of opening access and improving some of the flow as well. Um, I do have a comment from um, Brian Von Losberg, the very last comment of this of, your, of the City Council, who makes the suggestion to move the barrier west, but also reflects on the past City Council's decision about having this barrier in the first place. Blocking right of way is bad public policy, and I fully understand why um, it happened relative to the Domino's Pizza. But what happened there, and I and I don't want to sort of throw a former council under the bus because they were responding to a real issue with the Domino deliveries and real people who were affected by that, Helen and the other people. But. I would argue that the solution um, then has created a bunch of issues that we're now dealing with here. For instance, this trash delivery mechanism, and, and with all due respect to, to uh, the counselor, we have heard from the trash people, and we reached out, and we did understand um, the safety issues, uh, and, and I find it appalling that we have a situation where right now we have um, probably multi-ton vehicles backing down public rights of way to, to service folks. That's not how public right-of-way is intended to operate. Uh, All right, so that was Brian Von Losberg. And uh, one of the uh, things that they're going to try to do is that the item was moved into the consent agenda where they have more information on the proposed final move for Monday. Uh, public safety and health, uh, they gave a presentation from the city uh, county health department about policies for contagions and measles outbreaks. Um, there's been uh, record uh, measles outbreaks that have been uh, popping up recently, um, and they want to talk about how the city county is going to deal with uh, any potential contagion that might happen. They gave an update on that as well. Uh, so operational standards to quarantine sick individuals. Uh, also, measles are not as common as you might think, but uh, be vaccinated for that disease as well. Because um, with the measles kind of already gone, a lot of uh, vaccinations for the measles aren't as necessary as they were back in the epidemic days. Yeah. So some well, people are not vaccinated, not because of, you know, anti-vaxxers. Some people are just not vaccinated because, you know, the measles just is not a thing, a big deal anymore. It's like yeah. a I lot mean, of it... Yep. You definitely like, yeah. please. But the biggest vaccination that most people get is anti-polio. You know, that's yeah. that's a that's a, one of the biggest staples of anti uh, of vaccinations right now. But yeah, measles is kind of making a little bit of a resurgence mm -hmm. in the nation as a whole. Yeah, and they've always have like they always have a, a measles outbreaks, uh, especially amongst Amish communities and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to get into that. That's pretty much it for your city council. If you want more information about uh, these meetings and more, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. They're going to continue this topic about the barrier for Monday. If you wish to uh, comment or give any kind of concern, you can always uh, message the city of Missoula. And you can find out all this information and more by going to ci.missoula.mt.us. You can also go to MCAT.org for everything you need to know about MCAT. We are, uh, are now offering... Um, services online for you guys to sign up for our equipment rentals and user applications. So we have a new electronic user application and that's usually the one that we have people to sign when they join MCAT. It's kind of like the orientation form but you can now do it online but you still have to go to orientation where you can be oriented by myself or Neil or whoever happens to be here. Maybe him. I can do that. Yeah. And it just kind of we kind of go through the whole kind of concept of what MCAT's all about. The whole idea is like we provide free equipment for you to use, but the only catch is that you have to provide us with a program that we can air on our channel, channel 189 through Charter Cable. All right, so that's our spiel. Um, I'm going to be back in about a little bit. Uh, we're going to have Josh play some music after an art clip, and I've edited it down to make it nice and pretty for you guys. So when we come back after this art clip from the uh, Clay Studio of Missoula's art auction, we'll have Josh play us some music. So take it away.
Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. All right, let's talk about some events that are happening here in um, the city of Missoula. There's a lot going on. Uh, kicking off this morning is the Comprehensive Planning to Navigate Change. First Center State Bank Conference Room is hosting a, uh, if you're overwhelmed by options for organizational planning, join the club. How do you choose between all those plans you've heard about from strategic plan, business plan, marketing and communication, financial and fund development to successful planning? Use the M&A principles and practices for nonprofit excellence as a roadmap. And this is perfect for anybody who wants to start their own nonprofit and go through the paperwork of 5013Cs. Um, usually if you are a person who just starts doing a uh, nonprofit 5013C document, it usually takes 48 hours. 48 full hours to complete the form and if you've uh, if you're seasoned veterans it's usually about 20 to 25 hours so you know first time filling it out on that stuff and they, they talk about you know planning and working on this stuff and when you're nonprofit they also help you with uh, strategies to improve uh, fundraising efforts to fund your nonprofit family story time and tiny tales what's the difference I'll tell you family story time is a great place for uh, families to come together and pick out a stack of books chosen by the librarians for kids. Uh, Tiny Tales is a good opportunity for kids to sit down, learn finger plays, um, do all sorts of fun activities, um, but also engage in reading. One of the things they always ask parents to do is to keep anything that's distracting for kids because they want kids focusing on reading and learning about books and all sorts of things. So there's things that are happening at the Missoula Public Library starting at around 10.30 a.m. Podcast. Do you know how to? Uh, so the now you know podcast episode six. What is purgatory? Uh, so this is through uh, the uh, Christ the King Parish. Listen to the newest episode of Now You Know, and that's going to be happening at twelve thirty noon at the Christ of Ching Parish. Endeavor. Endeavor is. Uh, the best representation I think of it is as a PTA minus the T, and it, it is a kind of a group where they invite parents who have kids who are homeschooled to uh, come together, and it's a good socializing tool for, to get um, involved with other kids. Board games, Legos, they're for kids, but it's not a drop-off event. Teen Writers Group at Missoula Public Library improve your writing skills when you're in high school. It's a whole nother avenue uh, beyond middle school, and it's to improve your writing skills, uh, get some um, feedback from your public library, but also get some, uh, what's that, Constru constructive criticism, which basically is another word for saying non-mean criticism. Yes. Yeah. Nice critiques. Yeah, nice critiques. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't understand what you're coming from the, from this part versus this part. My writing skills are terrible. I'm a horrible writer. I don't know why I went to journalism school, but I went there for the technical stuff like Shazam. Oh, yeah. I did it just so I can push this button. There. Four years of college, four and a half years. <laughs> Nerf on the turf. Uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Hey, you get to basically have Nerf guns and you have a Nerf war. And running Fridays from 4 to 9 p.m., Saturdays from 6 to 9. Uh, and Sundays from 5 to 8. Come individual, bring your friends to join in the fun. Nerf on turf. So they basically have a bunch of Nerf guns and you hang out at the Missoula Indoor Sports, Sports Arena. Nice. My only problem with that is that uh, people always cheat when I do that. They're like, oh, no, your, your phone dart didn't hit me. And, you know. I would honestly uh, love it when someone hit me with a dart. I'd uh, over, uh, I'd over-exaggerate. Just, like, act like... Yeah, like, because know. honestly, the best, like, honestly, like, it's not about, uh, if you watch a movie, it's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you get hit in the movie. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I quoted Rocky Balboa. <laughs> nice. But I honestly, that's one of the best quotes about uh, life in general is by Rocky Balboa. You should check it out. It's a good movie. Um, and also, uh, I, I just want to diverge back to Rocky V, the, one of the most hated Rocky films with Tommy the Gun. Just so you guys know, uh, Murgis Beredith does make a surprise cameo in a flashback of that movie, and it's the most heartwarming, touching scene that is in any Rocky movie whatsoever. So check it out. Um, Run a mile in her shoes. Uh, University of Montana is doing a sexual assault awareness run at the University of Montana campus. The whole idea is that registration is $20. All proceeds go towards the uh, women's assault resource groups in the University of Montana community. The whole idea is they wear high heels and you run a mile in her shoes, oh. literally. Yeah, it's a fun event. It's, it's great. We uh, uh, They always have uh, some good uh, representation, and it's a good to watch it as well. It's always a yeah, fun it's thing. I think they run around the UC a bunch of times. My ankles just actually hurt a little bit when you said high heels. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Jesus. Well, you know, you don't have to wear, like, high heels. Maybe you can get away with wearing a couple of the flats. Yeah. Because I've known some girls who, uh, you know, they wear high heels out on the town, but then when they go on the dance floor, they switch out for some flats. Mm -hmm. that they're, You know, flats are easy. They're just... 
they're like really they're flat. They're flat. Yeah. And they just like switch them on, and you're just like, oh, I didn't notice you were wearing that. It's like, yeah, but I did notice you got yeah. shorter all of a sudden. I, I tried high heels once, um, and it, I almost broke my ankle. Yeah. So be careful, guys. International Wildlife Film Festival, the 42nd annual International Wildlife Film Festival, is doing a group art show at the Zudana Arts Community Center. They're welcoming works that help create the inter, inter, um, International Wildlife Film Festival. They, they said this like five times in this um, explanation, but all works featured in, in the show will uh, have a connection to the uh, film festival through imagery, ideas, and materials, or all three. And they usually have a Walk of the Wild parade that kicks off the event that happens as well. Arabic Calligraphy Workshop, University of Montana, part of the Celebrate Islam week with the uh, uh, city's proclamation earlier this week about celebrate religious freedom week salam Missoula presents a week of engagement exhibits about the beautiful faith of islam study the elegant shapes of arabic letters and islamic art forms learn how to write important islamic concept names and words in arabic and it's going to be at the university of montana starting at 6 p.m you can check it out more uh, by going on to missoulaevents.net entrepreneurs pitch potluck free cycles if you're an entrepreneur and you want to and you have a pitch and you want to go to a potluck and enjoy some music, go to Free Cycles tonight at 6 p.m. It's a, it's an entrepreneur's pitch meeting. So if you have a great idea for a product or a, a business strategy, why not? Check it out at Free Cycles tonight at 6. Sun Earth Connection, Space Weather and Solar System Storms. Solar Storms, sorry about that. This is through the uh, University of Montana's Planetarium Show, and it's going to be at the Montana Payne uh, Center, fam Payne Family Native American Center at the University of Montana, and this is with uh, Chris um, tonight as well. Uh, Tatsiar. I'm um, sorry, I'm totally butchering that name, but just I'd Chris. Say, I'd say Tozier? Tozer. Tozer? Oh, yeah, because Tozer. the TS is usually a czar, kind of like yeah, a czar. Tozer. Chris Tozar, and the Sun Earth Connection, Space Weather, and Solar Storm. So that's what's happening to, to finish up your events for your Friday. If you're interested in going out and about, they got John Wayne, the Pain at the Monk's Bar, they got Neon Lights at the Flying Squirrel, they got Dead Hipster. I love the 90s dance party at Badlander. They got insufficient funds. Um, country music at the Sunrise Saloon. They got Band in Motion, which is dance music at the Union Hall. Um, Chloe Gendro at Top Hat Lounge, which is R&B. I don't see much R&B anymore. All right, so that pretty much does it for all your Friday events. Let's kick into some Saturday events as well. Um, you know, if you like the farmer's market, and it's the winter time and the farmer's market aren't really starting to kick off until late May, they're going to be doing it. Uh, don't worry about him. He, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, He's I'm cool. really tired. Yeah. Yeah. So winter market is on Saturday, um, 9 to 1 p.m., kicking off your Saturday. Um, it is a good way to get knickknacks, food, buy local kind of stuff, and it's going to be the Missoula Senior Center from 9 to about 1 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, Citizen Science and Volunteer Orientation Watershed Education Network is always looking for people to volunteers and help out with their watershed and see the, um, the health of the river system and the streams here in the city of Missoula, and they're always looking for people. You can contact Aisha at montanawatershed.org. Go to wa montanawatershed.org to join the stream team, and this happens from about 10 to about noon for the Spring Volunteer Orientation and they're asking people to be there at 9 a.m. and it's by the Pizza Hut uh, <laughs> by um, East Broadway so go to Eastgate that's where their location is vinyl sale hey vinyl you like vinyl don't you you're a music Ow. boy <laughs> yeah, I like vinyl. So starting at 9 a.m., the University of Montana is doing the world's largest garage sale from 9 to 1.30 p.m. They usually do it at the, near the UC or the, at the, oh. the actual parking garage. And is it's, it, is it just it's vinyl vinyls? sale. And it's part oh. of the world's largest garage sale. So it's adjacent to the, girl, the world's largest garage sale. So you have some oh. stuff you want to buy. 9 a.m. to about 1.30 p.m., University of Montana. It's coming to the end of the school year. Pretty close. Finals week is pretty much happening towards the end of this month, uh, ever since they eliminated winter session. So they uh, had to move a lot of things and like these events move up a little bit. It's a good way to get uh, you know, old snowboarding gear, s uh, skiing gear, and you know, it's a, it's a nice swap. You know? Engineer that girl. Six, 
uh, STEM Expo. So STEM is uh, it's 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 a popular term with educators, with you know science, technology, engineering, and math. And it's going to be an expo at the University of Montana Payne Family Native American Center in Missoula. And it's going to be happening starting at 10 a.m. And it's uh, bring together girls kindergarten through uh, 12th grade, eager to learn more about STEM. Our girls have the chance to try hands-on engineering and science activities that will help them become self-aware of their STEM skills and motivated to learn more. And uh, many of the uh, 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 groups that are going to be there are Spectrum Discovery Center, um, Guts, gr Girls Using Their Strengths, and I believe there's going to be a bunch of other things there as well that help um, girls programs as well. But it's also open for everybody who is interested in STEM and learning about that stuff. Uh, Carnival for CASA. Carousel for Missoula is doing a uh, joint with the Kappa Alpha Theta um, sorority is putting a family-friendly carnival in front of the Missoula Carousel. This event is ra to raise money for local nonprofits like Casa of Missoula who endure abuse and neglected children have a voice. Um, three on three basketball tournament. I'm always looking for these tournaments because they're always really fun. Anybody can join it. It's a three on three tournament. So you and two of your friends can hang out and go there. Uh, there must be 16 to participate in this uh, basically uh, tournament type style deal. Divisions are open to all ages and all groups. And it's going to be at the University of Montana starting at 11 a.m. I believe they usually kind of do these things in the parking lots, but they might be doing this at the Dahlberg Arena. Fifth annual architecture. architecture oh, wait. Oh. Ar oh, God. Fifth Annual Archaeology Day at Historic Fort Missoula. Historic Fort Missoula, Missoula is doing a bunch of uh, events that are, as the weather starts warming up, they're going to be kicking off a whole bunch of events and camps for the kids. Archaeology is the study of human history and prehistory through the excavation of sites and, and, and analysis of artifacts. Meet real archaeologists hands-on with artifacts. Learn to excavate in a simulated dig pit and make your own uh, petroglyphs. Ugh. In our, yeah. Yeah, in our yeah, in our in a replicated cave. Well, that was a struggle. Anyways, archaeology has a lot of difficult words. Yep, but this is going to happen from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and you can contact Christina uh, at the Missoula, at the uh, Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. Every Saturday we have Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. If you have a kid who is an artist who wants to make some stop animated films with Legos, uh, we got this boy right here provided yeah. a whole bunch of new Legos for you, uh, for your kids, and it's a good activity for a lot of kids to come together and create uh, basically movies out of inanimate objects. Saturday drop-ins every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. here at MCAT. It's $10 per kid, $15 for siblings. So if you have Brother, sister, brother, brother, sister, sister, um, non-binary person, non-binary kid, um, come together. They are $15, and if you have a third, it's still $15, so don't worry about that. But they have to be between the ages of 9 and 13, so you can't just have like a 20-year-old, uh, a 10-year-old, and a 5-year-old. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a pushing it. Don't push it. We're, we're good, but we're not that kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adult and Teen Challenge Annual Hope Gala, a Double Tree Hotel in Edgewater. Uh, Adult and Teen Challenge Hope Gala is a premier fundraising event celebrating freedom from addiction and generating support for the students currently in the programs. Live testimonies from students and their families. Silent and live auction presentation from Attorney General F Tim Fox on how severe these crises are are in Missoula. Your attention, uh, your uh, attendance puts hope within your one in ten Montanans currently not receiving help for an addictive, active addiction. Camping in is intense. Oh, geez. Camping is in, <laughs> campings are, are intense, yo. Um, fundraiser. The Clark Fork Valley Elks Lodge 2757 is, do, it's that old building, um, you know, that old really cool looking building, Elks Lodge on the corner next to Front Street. Join the project Ascend team as they uh, have a second camping is intense fundraiser for April for a delicious authentic Cuban dinner featuring Cuban pork roast, rice, and bean, b uh, black beans and other uh, authentic dishes um, including a dessert. They will be hosting an epic silent auction and a live auction for those who would like a little more competitive. Um, all proceeds to the events goes to Ascend Summer Camps and help kids get outdoors. Um, the each ticket is $25 and is good for one uh, Cuban dinner and raffle entry. The event will be at 6.30 p.m., um, but they open their doors at 5.30 and it's going to be at the Elks Lodge with their special debut of their new short film. During uh, Doors open at 5.30 and they can't wait to see you there. And also, 
uh, like I said, Diversity Day is happening at the Missouri Art Museum. They moved it to the Missouri Art Museum. They used to do it at the Missoula Senior Center for the last couple of years. But I think this is the third year they're going to be doing Missoula Art Museum, and it's Diversity Day. And from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., all their efforts are going to celebrating everything weird and everything great and everything normal, not normal, and everything in between and what we can conceive as normal. But, of course, when I say normal, it's also kind of takes away from the concept of what Diversity Day really means. And find out what it means. It happens from 5.30 to 7.30. You get to hear uh, from kids from all over the city of Missoula and how they've affected change through Empower Montana. Grizz Glow 5K Fun Run, 8.30 on Saturday night. They're doing a night run, and they're going to be meeting at the, the uh, I believe it's off of the uh, Dorm Blazers, South Avenue and Higgins, and they're going to be, uh, it's the 7th Annual Grizz Glow Fun Run starting at 8.30 p.m. Um, at the University of Montana Golf Course. Sorry about that. It's, I'm way off. Golf Course is probably a little further west from there, so you can check it out. Um, if you show up there, the race uh, t-shirts and LED bracelets, you know, I think it, it does, uh, you do receive a, uh, a race t-shirt, LED bracelet, uh, monocolor LED uh, chaser necklace, and blacklight reflective race number proceeds for the Grizz Glow Supports UM Campus Recreation Youth Camp Programs. Whew! And that's it. I'm done talking. I'm, I'm, I'm bored of talking. <laughs> I'm really, I really am. All right. Do you have anything you want to say before we go? Um, be careful running. Yeah. You're at night. Be really careful. I'm, I'm assuming they're probably going to be fairly at a close circuit yeah. rather than having, like, the one car. Like, of yeah. course, it is a golf course. They might be having a bunch of people on golf carts being, like, just also, driving. Make sure you stretch. Because that's really important yep. before you go on a long run. Um, you also are, you're also uh, supposed to stretch after the warm-up. Yeah, yeah. Stretch before and after. Make sure you get the, the like, you know, arm stretch yeah. going. Because um, so many people have that tendency to be like, I'm going to go running, and then they don't stretch before, during, and after. Because yeah. the during part is the most important part, is because by then your muscles are a little bit looser, and that's when you're able to stretch. But if you stretch too much, you might pull a muscle. Yeah. Like anything, any too much of anything is bad. <laughs> It's, it's, it's just, a, the, the, it's like a rule of thumb for anything. Too much of anything is bad for you. Too much water, yeah. you drown. Too much air, uh, mm -hmm. your blood, uh, you, you know, like when you put air in your blood, you know, all that stuff. But anyways, yeah. um, let's not get into that. Also, Saturday drop-ins, uh, there's some really cool Legos in there, mm -hmm. fully posable figures. Yep. Come and get it. Nice. And we have a couple nice booklets stuff. that you left here as well, so we made sure to put them in uh, oh, yeah, yeah, manila yeah. envelopes. Instruction so. booklets, too. Yeah, so if a kid wants to make something, they can. Yeah. I've had kids come in here, and they're just like, uh, they took like, I don't know why. It was like they, 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 they took like an hour and a half just to dismantle their stuff. I thought that's like the easiest <laughs> part. Building yeah, stuff takes forever. A wall and it's just yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so uh, we've had many kids from uh, all walks of life from in, in, in Missoula area. Last week, we had about... 12 kids, so, well, yeah, it's crazy. Nice. It's a drop-in event, so there's no, like, sign-ups or RSVP, and it's a good way for your kids to get engaged and meet other kids who are uh, like-minded to create stuff. Yeah. All right. Do you want to play us out? Yeah, yeah. All I'm right, guys, thanks out. for joining us, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott. And I'm Josh, playing the piano. Take it away, Josh. Yeah.
Thank you.